Mario? Mario! Luigi's Mansion is a cult classic and a game I always come back to in the fall. It's just short enough that I can squeeze it in around Halloween or sometime soon after. It was the first game I had played on the GameCube, and it was definitely different than anything else I had played up to that point in my life. Of course, Super Mario 64 had its own scary mansion, which I dwelled in often. And it had that horrible, horrible piano. But Luigi's Mansion felt entirely different. And on top of that, every time I returned to the game, I felt like I discovered something I didn't notice before. Recently, I had played through it again and something came to my attention. Sucking up all those portrait spirits just felt wrong. I mean, a decent amount of them tried to harm me, but majority of them did not. I felt generally bad about capturing the parents you encounter early in the game, since they were just minding their own business. Something about turning them into portraits just made me feel bad, but it did get me thinking. These portrait ghosts in Luigi's Mansion aren't your typical spirits from the mushroom world. They aren't creepers, lantern ghosts, or your everyday booze. It is said that E. Gad collected them on his travels over the course of his life, but he never goes on to explain where they are from. Within the interior of the mansion, there are several portraits of the spirits that capture the essence of them in a more human form. When compared to their spirit forms, one can make the assumption that these spirits were once alive and that these were portraits from their previous lives. But if they were once alive, what happened to them? Why did they become ghosts? And why did Egad decide it was alright to capture them? Obviously, we have a few bad apples in the bunch. There are several ghosts in the area that have no quarrels with harming Luigi. But then we also have these peaceful ghosts like Neville, who just want to enjoy a book. Although his examine text is a bit of a direct challenge, from his demeanor we can determine that he isn't really a threat to Luigi. Unfortunately, as a player, we suck up this father of three anyways, and then turn him into a portrait so Egad can hang him up proudly in his gallery. But really, what is the purpose in turning them back into portraits? It's apparent that Egad doesn't really care as much as he leads on in Luigi's Mansion, since in Dark Moon, we discover that he apparently sells these portraits at garage sales, and that is how King Boo escaped again. It doesn't seem right at all to be laundering spirits and selling them for money, even if it's not intentionally and more so due to clearing out space. If these spirits were indeed people at one point, then this whole concept is really grim, and I feel bad for actually assisting Egad. But I suppose before jumping to conclusions, we should probably take a look at what we know about the spirits first. So let's jump back a bit and talk about a few of them in general. Most of the adult ghosts in the manor couldn't care less that Luigi is creeping through the mansion they live in. Even if this mansion mysteriously appeared not too long ago, it appears most of them have no context of time and have always existed this way. However, the children are a totally different story. Chauncey is aware of Luigi's presence the moment he enters the mansion, and may strike you with the chandelier in the foyer if you're not careful. His bio also says he was born a ghost which is a tad confusing, especially in comparison to other ghosts who have backstories. Soupy, a portrait ghost you encounter later in the game, died in her sleep at the age of 7. It is stated that her short nap unfortunately turned into her eternal rest. This makes things difficult because on one hand you have a child that was supposedly born a ghost, but on the other, you have a child that actually died. So, which one is the real spirit, and which one is just a manifestation of darkness? Are they both the same, and the description's context is simply misleading? Saying that Chauncey was born a ghost, and that crying throughout the night only seems natural, could be taken as just a poke at humor in his description. We often don't remember life's early years, so if Chauncey died right away, he probably wouldn't remember ever being alive. 
Let's part ways with the children and focus on another ghost from the mansion, who helps you tremendously on your quest to save Mario. Madame Clairvoya Madame Clairvoya is different from all the other ghosts in the manor, as she actually helps Luigi with her fortune-telling powers. Towards the end of the game, she actually wants Luigi to return her to the painting. Now that she has given Luigi all her wisdom, she can return to the painting satisfied. She mentions that the painting is peaceful to her and that there is sweet happiness within its oily canvas. Based off her logic, it would make sense she is still sound of mind when she is in her painting. Otherwise, how could she appreciate it? While she finds pleasure and peace there, this might mean the other spirits who don't wish to return may very well find it like a prison which makes me feel really bad again about sucking all these guys and gals up. However, if these ghosts aren't actually from humans, then there isn't really an explanation to seek out about their origin. Much like the other ghouls that wander the Mario universe, they just sort of exist. But if they were humans, then there are still answers to seek out. Clues in the various bios of the ghosts still hint at the fact that they were once human. But again, this could just be the playful, and sort of humorous, descriptions. However, humans do appear in the mushroom world in several different areas. Although we don't see them often, outside the cast of the main characters, they are spread about from the golf courses of the world to the bustling Diamond City. Although, the human ghosts encountered in the mansion appear to be vastly culturally different. One last point to touch on that we haven't discussed yet is Vincent Van Gore. Vincent is one of the final ghosts you encounter in Luigi's Mansion, and he has the artistic ability to bring his paintings to life. And those paintings are the lesser ghosts from the mansion. While he is able to create the lesser ghosts, does that possibly mean he has the ability to paint the portrait ghosts as well? I mean, they were paintings at one time or another. And, if you look closely at the back of the room, you are actually able to see some of the models of the portrait ghosts you have already captured. Did he simply paint these statues and bring these ghosts to life? It's another possibility, but that in itself makes me wonder why Vincent has this ability to begin with. It also conflicts with what Egad told us, unless Vincent was once a traveling painter. There is just so many possibilities. For me, it makes sense that these spirits are once human. To simply be a manifestation from magic wouldn't be doing them justice in my eyes, nor would Vincent just painting them for fun. I believe Egad did gather them from across the land, but for what reason, I am unsure. All of this still leaves me a bit jaded about the whole concept of turning ghosts into paintings. Now that you've heard my thoughts on this, I'd love to hear what you think. Do you think Vincent created the portrait ghosts? Are they actually spirits and separate from the magical mansion? And if they are, why did Egad capture them? Let me know in the comments below. I also want to give a shout out to Gaming Reinvented for their assistance with the lore of Luigi's Mansion. I've put their website link in the description below. Thanks for tuning in to our haunted trip into the darkness. If you'd like to join us on our YouTube voyage and help Luigi throw the dankest party in the mansion, then the subscribe button is just what you're looking for. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and until our next video, cheers. You've made it to the end of the video, but wait, your quest isn't over yet. There's plenty of other Nintendo videos with your name on them. Perhaps you'd like to find out a little bit more about Luigi's brother, Mario. He's quite the extraordinary fellow. Or perhaps you'd like to see what would happen if Mario and Link switched games on the Nintendo 64. Regardless, I hope you enjoy. Uh, what?